In today's session, we're going to be having a look at some of the volumetric lighting effects that you have available to you inside of Action. The volumetric lighting is available inside the True 3D environment and interacts with everything that you may be working with inside of the 3D space. To show these examples, what I'm going to start off with is I have some simple geometry inside of the Action Composite. The text simply says rays and I've gone ahead and just given it a shade of blue. Now in order for us to access our lighting tools, you need to make sure that you're inside of the node bin and you can either be working in the All Nodes tab which shows you every object you can add into the Action Composite or you can switch to the Relighting tab which gives you all the lighting tools which are available to you. The first thing we're going to do is start working with light. The most simple way of doing it is simply by selecting the Light node inside the Action Bin and dragging it into the composite. When I perform the drag operation, it pretty much enables the light in the scene and turns the shading on. Now I'm going to place this light here in this position because this is going to be used simply just to shade the front of the text. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a second light into the scene which will then create the volumetric lighting effect. The way I'm going to do this is I'm simply going to press Alt 2 to bring up a dual view split. Click on the right viewport and press F4 to get the camera result if you don't see it. On the left hand side you can click the left viewport and you can press the escape key to bring up the schematic view. Now the way that we add volumetric lighting into the scene with a light is we need to add a light to start off with. So here we have the light node again and I simply double click it and it will add itself into the scene. Now with this light what we'll do is since it is selected in the schematic we can go to the object menu and we'll take this node and we'll be pushing it all the way back in 3D space. The distance is pretty irrelevant, it's simply just to make sure that the actual geometry is in front of the light. Now in order for us to add the volumetric lighting it's really straightforward. We make sure that the light which will cast the volumetric lighting is selected in the schematic and we switch back to the node bin. Over here in the actual tabs you can go ahead and see that we have a node called Rays. To use it you simply double click on it and it adds it into the scene. Straight away you'll notice that there is volumetric lighting being applied into the scene and let's go ahead and examine this. So the first thing is let's switch back to a single view mode. So just press Alt 1 and this will bring you back to a single view. Now what we need to do here to understand the way volumetric lighting works is we're going to switch from the move mode to the orbit mode. With this cursor just click and drag on the screen and you can see that I'm actually orbiting the scene. From this angle you can see that we have our light which sits behind the geometry and you can see that it's actually pushing out light into the scene. The way to understand this is if you imagine in real life the atmosphere is full of dust and particles. So normally if we were to show a very very bright light in the room typically you would get volumetric lighting and this is exactly what is happening inside of the Action 3D Compositor. We simply have got a light in the scene and it's showing a very bright light cone into the 3D space and this is what's casting the light. If we were to go ahead and switch over to the object menu, inside the object menu with the node and the rays still selected in the schematic you should get the rays menu down here on the right and the light menu on the left. In the Rays menu, this is where you can actually start controlling a few of the ways that we see this. Now the first thing we'll do to make this quite nice is I'm going to go to the Default Cam tab and simply just reset the orbit move that we did. Switch back to the Rays tab and we can start playing around with the controls. Now the first thing that affects the way volumetric lighting works is the intensity under global settings. So the global settings affects everything in the scene. So by dragging up the intensity you can see how I can increase the brightness of that light that is being shone directly into the camera. The other thing as well which controls what we see is the spread of the light cone, the way the light is spreading out. So in other words in the current mode that we're working in the light is actually directional. But if I was to increase the spread, you can see now that it gets brighter and brighter and from that you can see how it's now casting light. As the 3D geometry gets engulfed by the light cone, the actual objects are now being used as occlude objects which means they're creating shadows as the light hits the back of them. This is really, really powerful and very handy. Now if I just ease off on the intensity, you can see exactly what's happening. 
Now, one of the things I mentioned is that this light that we have here is directional. So once again, still in the orbit mode, I'm going to reorbit the camera again. The first thing you'll notice is how the light actually interacts in the true 3D environment. So if you were to have 3D camera moves inside of action with the volumetric lighting, it will react in a much naturalistic way. The other thing to notice is that as the light is shining into the text, you have this little icon over here that appears. This is the pivot point, and the pivot point basically allows you to point the light cone in the direction that you'd like to. So for example, if you wanted to have light casting down as opposed to directly at the camera, you could actually move this around. Just to give you an idea, if we switch from orbit mode to move mode, you can then grab the pivot, and if I move the pivot up and down, you can see how that pivot is then reacting inside the scene and you're getting this amazing looking volumetric lighting effects. Now once again, switch to the default cam tab and just press reset so that we can look through the camera and you can see exactly what's happening with the pivot point. So if I was using this particular method, what I'd be doing is I'd be animating the light. So I could be animating the light in one direction, animating the pivot point of the rays in another direction, which will then give me a really, really good result. Now once again, if I switch back to the Rays tab, there's a few other things that we can look at. The other things you have is the length of the actual volumetric lighting as it comes out of the light. So for example, the default length is set to 100 points, but if I go ahead and decrease this back, you can see how the volumetric lighting then goes back and it comes for out. So this could be used as a point of actually animating the volumetric light as it automatically bursts out the light and then you could use the length slider to then animate it so it disappears again. The samples is simply the quality slider of the actual volumetric light samples that are taking place and uh, samples set to 500 which is pretty good by default. Now the volumetric lighting that we have here is pretty clean okay so one of the things we can do is we can activate shimmering and this gives the volumetric light a much more of a caustics feel. And what you can do in terms of caustics is you can go ahead and increase the thickness of the shimmering and you can increase it quite a large degree. It will give you some really interesting looks and you can then also turn on animate. And what that means is if we were, for example, just to scrub through the composition, you can see that we're getting this caustic effect. Great for creating these volumetric lights, very good for working with perhaps underwater type of effects and you can really adjust and tweak them. Now the one thing is it does auto animate it for you if you want to. But what you can also do is you can disable animate and you can adjust the pan X or pan Y to give you a maybe slightly slower variation of caustic shimmering through the actual edge rays themselves. So there's a lot of options that you can play with and a lot of adjustments that can be made.